Well, hello. This is Jay Campbell and and McFarland, and we're here just to talk for a few minutes about this amazing project that's documenting the journey of independent living in Kingston. And um, we thought you would let you know where it all began, which I think, and it was in my flat, wasn't it? And I sort of said, hey, have you heard about the independent living movement? There are people breaking out of residential care and getting PAs to support them in the community. What have we got in Kingston? Man? I want to have a personal assistant. I do not want to have a nurse getting me up. I don't want to be dictated to when I get up in the morning and when I go to bed at night. And I think you said, actually, that's not a bad idea because you were talking to me about Kingston Association. Was it for it was physically handicapped or something? Very much that, yes. <laughs> yes, it was. And it came at a very important time in my life because it was at a time 50 years ago next year when I was in a family situation that was not at all to my liking, certainly inaccessible, physical access within my home, and um, suddenly into my life came a message that this Kingston Association for the Handicapped was being started by a man called Whitcliffe Noble, who was a world-renowned architect for disabled people, built swimming pools, that was his, one of his main themes, but he went all over the world designing different buildings. I got uh, roped in to become the honorary secretary, very, uh, well, at the beginning, and there were two or three other disabled people that joined me, and very kindly there was what I've always called the Twin Set and Pearls Brigade <laughs> who came in and supported the organisation and it went from there and very quickly I had to leave home in terms of you know needing, needing to leave the family situation and I had to live in a residential setting and because I belonged to the organisation, mm -hmm. the support I got from it to move back into the community was enormous. So it was a very, very um, complex time in my life, but yes. a very good one. But also you still had to get your night dress at six o'clock. Oh, and before. <laughs> and a quick face wash with the lukewarm flannel and off to work. But you were in your own home? Yes, I was, I was in, a, in a little bed sit in Kingston, part of an older person's complex, and I went to work every day, and it was absolutely wonderful in one way and absolutely yes. exhausting in another. And then you moved to Calder Court, yes. but still the nurses were getting you up and putting you to bed, is that right? They were, and it didn't, it was any time uh, that suited them because obviously they had other people to support yes. so it would be anything from five o'clock in the morning uh, and at night it would be any time up to midnight. And so then I came home from university and I was a 22 year old red-headed <laughs> radical coming straight from Sussex University with lots of ideas of feminism and making my own way in the world and I came home to mum and dad and I thought, well, I don't want to live with mum and dad. I want a place in the community. And I looked in the yellow pages and found out this organisation called Kingston Association for, I think it was still the physically handicapped then. Yes, it was. It was. And so I rang it up and I got Anne McFarlane on the phone and I said, I want a flat. And she said, do you indeed? <laughs> And I said, yes, and I want a wheelchair accessible flat and um, I want to arrange people to come and get me up and put me to bed. And she laughed. Um, but you did get me my flat. 
did you? Oh, which is amazing. I did, and um, that was wonderful because what happened, what was so important to me was that here was somebody considerably younger than myself who put ideas into my head, that I, <laughs> some of which I'd never heard of, um, including partying. Um, but it was very important and I went on a huge learning curve. I think yes. that was true. I, I went on a training course. There was so much going on, we can't tell you what, hear what the history was. Well, basically, we joined the growing oh, we did. movement of disabled people. Yes, yes. And there were disabled people, just like us, waking up all over the country, mm. thinking, I'm not going to actually be told what to do anymore. I'm not going to be told when to go to bed, or where to go, or what day centre to go in. I want to be out in the world, finding my own way, and having choice and control over my life. And it was a little bit like the women's movement, fighting for the vote. We were fighting for independence and freedom and liberation. And I think that was the germ of independent living and for were, us, wasn't yes. it? Yes, and there were two significant things that happened. One within Casel, yes. when we decided that we want, disabled people decided they wanted a name change. Yes. And they wanted to leave the organisation. They did not want to be led by non-disabled people. I think that was down to, that was my, one of my radical ideas. I said, why are all these non-disabled yes. people running well, our organisation now? And I said, well, come and join it and we'll overthrow them. Yes, we so did. So I did, didn't I? Yes, we finished up. We, we had I don't no, think they liked me very much. No more daffodil balls, no more... No. 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 And they, they would try to hang on to Anne and persuade her to keep to the other ways. And I was putting Anne the other way, saying, Anne, will you stop getting in your nightdress at six o'clock? We've got to get someone to get us up and put us in to bed at our time. I mean, I was lucky at the time because I had a boyfriend, so I had my flat, and he was doing it all, but I didn't want him to become my carer for the rest of my life. He should, I wanted him to be my boyfriend. And that was another word I'd not really heard of. Yes. I mean, I think, I think the history of our lives is really critical. And we I think this project, each other, didn't yeah, we? we did. And, and that was the most wonderful thing because this project really would never have happened in a way no. if we hadn't, well, it wouldn't have, if we hadn't have met each other all those years back, yes. if we hadn't have become friends, if we hadn't empowered each other in different ways. Absolutely. Because Jane may have been far more advanced in the in in the intermediate, you know, in the world as it was. Yes. But I was still dragging behind because although I used to go to London meetings of disabled people and so on, I was still uh, they were things that really quite. Sh really I think you kept me grounded as well. I think. And I, you uh, kept people on side. Where I think I would have just said yes, we swept through. everybody. Mm -hmm. So it was. It yes. was in one day. We'd heard about this thing called direct payments, and it came from somebody in a home in Hampshire called Lee Court, and he got six of the residents to join together, and they had a plan to get out of that home by 1981. And they were going to do it, and they were going to use the money that the the local authority was spending on their care and their accommodation. They wanted that money for themselves to buy in their own care and find their own place. And that was the beginning. And Jane, I think it's really important to say that um, those people, um, not only were the forerunners in this country, but also when you really examine that process of five solid years of keeping Absolutely. going, really trying to get out of that incarcerated situation. And coming up against a culture and attitudes that really oh. were afraid of our empowerment. Yes. Very. Because they thought, well, where am I in all of this? Yes. And the answer was, with your thoughts. But, uh, uh, do you and I think that was quite hard for yeah. them. Oh, definitely. And do you remember that story of the day there was a conference, you know, one of these consultation type oh, days yes. in Kingston? And Jane and I, of course, were there. Yes. And um, what happened was that 
at that time I was on the community health council and so I was sort of on stage with others and Jane, you know, when the question time came, Jane said, so how am I going to get to work? If you're going to up in the mornings, you know, what, what are you going to do about it? And of course, I think that was the first time it really dawned... That somebody in a wheelchair... Could go to work. Could actually go to work. Yes, and of course... I didn't know which hat I was wearing. I was wearing about three hats on that day. <laughs> and what happened after the meeting was that I was called... They all turned on you. Oh, they did. It was absolutely I was, I was called to a meeting. I had to sit around the table with 12 professionals, Telling you including the head of Kingston Hospital, and I was absolutely... Well, they, they told you off. They more than told Actually. me off. They told me off to the point where I said, I'm not taking any more of this, I'm leaving, and I went. But it was awful, because in those days I did not have a powered outdoor wheelchair. So I couldn't just escape. Mm. See, we've never been able to really escape, have we, in life? No. Not until the last, you know, 20 odd years. Yes. But and it's also very difficult to do these things alone. Yes, you can't. So when it was out on her own, it was not possible. No. But two people make a who gang. have a different <laughs> world, they make a gang. Yes. And so one day we sat in my back room in my flat that Anne got me in Alpha Road and we started a plan and our plan was to get the council to give us the money that we should have that was in their coffers to look after us that we should have it as a direct payment and that was the day we began and it took how many years? Three years, two years? Probably two, but I think we had a kind of almost we worked out between us a watertight plan. We, yeah, we did. And it's always we good were, to have a plan. Yeah, and we were determined that when we been to, that when we got to the director's office, we, we had were all the not, answers. Yeah, we had all the answers. I think that was the secret. Yes. And it, we and our our uh, plan and and our paper that we'd written was. It was taken to council yes. unedited. It was. And, yes. and, and they sort of go to say, well, we'll do it for you two yes. as a pilot, but we're not promising anyone else. So we said, well, all right, because we knew once you make that crack, yes. then the water will go gushing through. Yes. And you remember that night well, don't you, Ad? Oh, you were I so was sick. Nervous. I you, was sick. You couldn't go. No, could I could not go. I was. You see, that history is so strong. Well, you still felt the walls of the institution yes. around oh, you. Oh, easily, yes. And, um, but me, I couldn't wait to go. <laughs> no. It was couldn't. at my great day in yeah. court. Yes. And so I went yeah. and I spoke and they said, OK, we'll give it a go. We'll try the project. Mm. And the good thing was, at the time that we were developing the project inside the council, there was the appointment of a very enlightened um, director of social services and assistant director. Yes. And this was Roy Taylor. And he should be mentioned here. Yes. Because he was incredibly important in changing mm. attitudes within the council and amongst the councillors mm -hmm. to develop independent living in Kingston. And, his and it's always in important to have your allies. And his second in command, of course, was Jenny Webb. And Jenny and Webb, absolutely. She knew how to handle difficult situations, difficult, difficult people. Yes, and we got through, didn't we? And she got the money. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing. So it began with two, mm -hmm. and then it was three, and then it was four. And then it was five, and now how many in Kingston? Mm. One by one, as people came onto the scheme, mm. you saw them grow from very kind of oppressed and passive disabled people to disabled people who then developed their own personalities within their families. Yes, that, that Some of them went to work, others had families. Others just had a jolly good time, probably for the first time in their lives. But many hadn't recognised discrimination particularly until absolutely they not. were absolutely confronted with new ideas and yes. then... So I think this tells our audience and all of you out there watching this video, 
it doesn't stop here. You have got to keep on fighting. You have got to liberate the new generation of disabled people. And you must not give up to what we've fought so hard for. Because believe me, there are many out there who just can't wait to take our liberty away. Just remember, disabled people are the future. And we are your future. I don't think we want to end there, don't we? Independent living is the future. Yes. And the past. And the present. Yes. So everyone, nothing about us without no. us. No. Remember that. And it's our phrase. Yes. It's ours. Jane, I think you'll agree that we should dedicate this, this um, input to the launch to Jane Lawrence. Absolutely. Who died a week ago, who is part of this project, whose memory will stay alive, and who contributed so much to uh, KSIL, Kingston Centre for Independent Living, and so much to this community. So thank you, Jane, for all that you have done for us.